Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be discussing the CAD 13 uh, released by Cannondale in 2019. Uh, is it really a good bike? Um, I was able to pick this up last week and I have to say uh, I'm I am pleasantly surprised. It has it uh, met my expectations. Now, what you're looking at here is the 2021 Cannondale CAD 13 Disc 105. That's Shimano 105 spec. And the reason why I bought it um, is because I had signed up for, I've been signing up for Criteriums about an hour and a half uh, from me. And it was raining the forecast and I didn't want to race the, the carbon bikes. So I picked this up because I figured it'd be a great fair weather bike and also a good winter training bike. And, um, you know, I ended up not racing, something came up, but I was able to get out on it uh, for a ride uh, for about an hour and a half. And uh, I, like I said, I, I was pleasantly surprised. So I'll tell you a little bit about the bike. Um, it, it's right now you're looking at it it's completely stock with the exception of a zip stem that I put on it. I have, I had a longer stem uh, from a bike fit that I had done recently. So that stem just gave me the adjustability that I need to get the bike fitted to uh, my standards. And also I changed the tires. So uh, the CAD 13 comes with, or this one came with these Vittoria Zafro Pro Slicks in 25C and as you can see not so great for the rain um, I'll bring you guys in closer a little bit but I replaced those with some Vittoria Corsa Control uh, 28C tires which have much better tread and are generally much better in all conditions and I fitted those with some latex tubes I had a chance to weigh the bike, um, as you see it, uh, bottle cages and also the Garmin handlebar mount, and it came in at 20.7 pounds, roughly, um, which is, it's heavy by race bike standards, but it's not, it's not terrible. Um, you could easily make this bike a lot lighter um, if you really wanted to. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer momentarily and we'll go over uh, some of the bike specs. So starting from the cockpit, as you can see, this is my zip stem. Uh, this is not standard. Um, the standard stem is a Cannondale 3 um, alloy stem and it's, it, you know, it's cheap <laughs> basically, but it gets the job done. As you can see, we've got a number of spacers here. Let uh, me move up a little bit. That's the top cap. You can see it's very tall. And then up here, you have what looks to be like maybe a 12 millimeter spacer, followed by some seven millimeter spacers, maybe six millimeters. I don't know, my measurement is off a little bit. But the bike actually came with three of them. And I left one of the smaller spacers off just to get it uh, fitted to, to where I needed it to be. Um, this is Prologo uh, bar tape, uh, nice and grippy. Um, it feels pretty good, it's comfortable. Looks like it has some decent padding. And here's my Garmin mount. And then you got the 105 11 speed shifters right there. Disc brakes, even though we're on the other side. And here I have the Vittoria Corsa Control uh, Graphing 2.0 and 28C. You can see all the tread I got there. Um, I, like I said, I put this on just basically to go racing in the rain. Uh, FSA chain rings, they're 5236 with the Cannondale 1 uh, crank arm. Look, Keo Classic 3 pedals that I had laying around. And everything else is 105, 105 front derailleur, uh, 105 cassette, 105 rear derailleur, and so on and so on. Rims are RD 2.0 Maddox, uh, who made these rims for uh, Cannondale. And I believe those are 28 spokes. 
or maybe 24, maybe I'm tripping. <clears throat> and just a couple of tax bottle cages that I had laying around. And Prologo saddle, R Prologo RS uh, STN, I believe. Not the lightest of saddles, um, but gets the job done. Seat post is alloy, it's not carbon. But all in all, uh, a very, very nice bike. And, um, you know, if you're looking to get a race bike, your first race bike, or just a fast bike that's durable and not gonna break the bank, uh, the CAD 13 is highly recommended. So, roughly, if you have $3,000 to spend and you're looking uh, for a fast road bike, but you don't really want to buy a low-end carbon bike, um, have a look at the CAD 13. And, you know, for $3,000, I mean, this bike is $22.99. And you figure you got to pay your tax and so on. But um, let's say $2,400, $2,500 out the door. And then, you know, I recommend you get a bike fit or at least a basic bike fit. Let's say maybe that's another 200 bucks. So you're at $2,700. You're going to need some pedals. You can get these look Kiel Classic 3s for like $65, $70. Bucks. Um... And what else? And then maybe you'll need a stem once you get fitted so you can get the proper, proper reach to the bars. So you're looking at another 100 bucks on top of that. So about $2,800, $2,900. Um, and you're good to go. You go. You're, you're golden. You can race this bike in Criteriums. It's actually uh, quite comfortable, even for all-day rides. And... Um, you can pretty much do everything on here. The, the bike frame will take up to 30 millimeter uh, wide tires. So if you needed even more comfort than what the 28s uh, would provide, you can run a 30 on there and be fine. So I also have two other bikes. I have a Super 6 Evo High Mod X Pro Tour bike, and I have a System 6 High Mod that I built up as well this would mostly be a direct comparison to the super six evo and i'll roll that in into the frame uh, so you can see momentarily but in the meantime uh one of the the, the super the super six has been acclaimed as being one of the best handling bikes of all time uh while being comfortable and racy at the same time and the CAD 13 is no different. Um, having a chance to really ride this, uh, it's, it, it handles very nicely, uh, especially on descents. Um, it takes corners fast at speed. Um, maybe not as responsive as the Evo, and that comes down the weight, but handling wise, it's solid. Uh, I rode the trail the other day, and, it, and it's very bumpy. You have a lot of tree branches coming up through the concrete. And I mean, this bike, I really couldn't tell the difference in vibration damping between this and my high mod Super 6 Evo. Cannondale attributes that to obviously running the dropped chain stays there. And also the seat post um, is, is very thin and they're able to get away with running a thinner seat post because it's D-shaped. So the D-shaped maintains its, its it's uh, strength and rigidity, but the the uh, the lack of width, if you will, um, gives it just enough compliance so that there's a, a, some tune flex to it. So those vibrations aren't tr uh, transmitted directly from the road to to your spine <laughs> or your hips. So it's really good. It's really solid what they were able to do. And then on top of it, when you run the 28 C's. Uh, tires um, it really makes for a really comfortable ride um, if you were looking to race this bike you know there are quite a few things you could do uh, you could easily save 
you could easily save a couple of a couple of pounds. Um, the handlebar is pretty heavy. The stock handlebar, which you were able to see, I have a FSA K Force carbon handlebar here. I could throw it on if I wanted. That's going to be a little over a pound lighter. I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to be about half a pound lighter. And uh, you could put on a Dura Ace cassette, something lighter. That's going to save maybe a, a third of a pound if you want it. Um, you could go to the carbon seat post. That's going to save a quarter pound. You could change the saddle. That's going to save a quarter pound. Um, you can switch out that Garmin mount for something lighter, uh, run the smaller Garmin instead of the larger one, like, the, you know, run a 130 Garmin instead of a 520 or a 1030. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much it. You can get a solid chain and just by doing those few things, you've already saved two pounds. So now you're at 20 pounds down to 18 pounds and change. Um, I really wouldn't go too crazy about the group set, but if you wanted to get, you know, you don't really want to spend too much money on a bike, but if you did, if this was your one and only, then yeah, upgrade to Ultegra or, or Dura Ace. But at the very least, if you're swapping out components, um, the shifters and also the rear derailleur are the heaviest components on a group set. So you know, you can swap those out, but they're also the most costly. Um, you know, the shifters, Dura Ace shifters are going to be probably around 400 bucks. And the rear derail is going to be probably around 300 bucks um, shipped to your door. But you'll save another pound. So, you know, now you're talking, now you're around 17 pounds on the build. Um, but even, even more than that, um, a good quality wheel set, a carbon, a set of carbon wheel sets will also save about a pound. So, you know, the, some wheels that come to mind are maybe the NV Foundation 45s for 1600. You got the Vision Metron 40 SLs. Um, those are about 1500 grams and change. Um, you can get the cheaper version, the SC 40s, which are about 16 and change. Um, as far as weight goes, grams, um, let's see what else you got. I mean, even the made in China stuff like super teams, um, yo-yos, um, can be had for under a thousand dollars and they'll get you under 1700 grams for a wheel set. So you can get a wheel set and save a pound off this bike. And then when you do the other stuff, now your, your bike is, your bike is 17 pounds approximately. So overall, uh, I'm very pleased with the bike. It's solid. Um, the ride is is I wouldn't say it's dull, but it does it does um, require a little bit of extra effort to get it to respond. At least I mean I'm a heavier rider, so maybe it's me than the bike. But um, out of the saddle, it didn't respond as quickly as say the Super Six Evo, but it does hold its speed well. Um, I was able to hold just under 30 miles an hour on this with no problem on a flat. Um, it was like 27, 28 um, with crosswinds. So, I mean, the bike will go. It'll hold its speed well once you get it up to speed. But, um, you know, it, it's on the acceleration front, it's obviously not going to accelerate as fast as, say, uh, the Super 6 Evo. And I think... That's pretty much it from the overview. Uh, like I said, the, the, the front end was very stable, descending, um, climbing, you know, you can feel the weight a little bit, but um, again, it holds its speed well. And if your riding position is on point and you're fitted and you're staying out of the wind, I think you'll, you know, if you're a fit rider, you can keep up with pretty much, pretty much anybody out there. So I'm gonna roll into in the Super 6 into the frame and we'll be able to make some direct comparisons. All right, fellas, I'm back with my Super 6 Evo High Mod in the frame. And as you can see, these bikes are virtually identical in so many ways. Um, they run the same geometry 
and I'll bring you guys closer just to point out a couple of things. You know, when I had my bike fit, as you can see, we got the saddles in the same position. And basically we were able to get, once I was able to get my numbers, I was able to get my bike dialed in so that I'm in the same exact position on both bikes. Now, as you can see, the 105 hoods are a lot taller uh, than the Dura Ace hoods, but the point, the reach is is identical, um, and that's and that's the main thing, just getting the reach. Now, as you can see, you know this thing is kitted out with pretty much all top spec parts. Uh, my Super Six weighs about 15.75 pounds. Got the Metron 5D and the Vision Metron 40 SLs. We've got ceramic bearings everywhere. Um, it's fitted with the Dura Ace uh, DI2. Um, and it's got an FSA titanium cassette and it's got, you know, FSA chain rings. But um, all in all, it's, it's, I mean, this is, you know, the pinnacle of carbon bike performance. So it was nice to be able to make a direct comparison um, between that and the CAD 13. And, um, you know, they, they feel very similar. And the CAD 13 offered uh, levels of comfort that pretty much rivaled uh, the Super 6 Evo. So you really are getting that Super 6 Evo DNA when you get the CAD 13. Um, you, you really, you're not, obviously carbon is going to have be the ultimate in ride quality and it'll always, you know, it's, it's so easy to get those aerodynamic tube shapes, but Cannondale was still able to get those truncated airfoil designs that pretty much mirror what they were able to do in carbon, even the top tube slopes down becomes narrow and the welds you know in the black trim the welds aren't um as sightly unsightly as some of the other colors and i honestly i think that's why i got the black one um because the welds you know did leave some room to be desired but um you know overall overall it's a solid bike and when i'm on a cat 13 um i feel I feel like I'm on the system, the, the Super 6 rather. And so, um, you know, you guys out there that don't really have Super 6 money that you don't want that Super 6 experience. The CAD, thir the CAD 13 is very, very, very close. And you can race on it, you can blast on it, you can ride on it all day and be comfortable. Like I said, I would just recommend getting some good tires. So as you can see, on the Super 6 Evo, I'm running courses speeds that just, yeah, I'm running them tubeless. They have like virtually no rolling resistance at all. But, uh, you know, on the, the Cat 13, I'm running Corsa Controls 28C, so they're a little bit wider. And I'm running with, I'm running latex tube. So it's still reduced roll, uh, resist, rolling resistance and friction, but not quite on the level of, of the Super 6. But it is still solid, guys. Um, you're not, you're not giving up much if you have the legs. Um, trust me, just a few pounds. And like I said, there are things you can do to claw some of that weight back. You'll never get it to 15 pounds. Um, I, I think 15 and a half pounds for a size 56 is remarkable. But um, you can definitely get, you can definitely get the Cat 13 to 17 pounds easily, and maybe even lighter than that when you add the wheels i wouldn't be surprised if you can get it to about 16 and a quarter pounds um if you if you threw everything at it so um that's it with that but i just wanted to talk about real quick the importance of getting a bike fit and as you can see you know these measurements are the same i'm doing my best with the camera guys so bear with me but you know once you have your measurements from the bike fit you know you get the same distance from the saddle to the tip of the stem, from the tip of the saddle, 
to the hoods um, on both bikes from the top of the saddle down to the center of the crank, you know, just to get your hip angle correct. And once you can do that and you have your numbers, you can pretty much set your bikes up so that you're on the same riding position whenever you get on any bike. So, um, you know, the, the bottom line will be what, how you're feeling on the day and it'll come less down to the equipment that you're on, you know? So I can jump from either bike. There's no adjustment period. I can just get on and pedal and it'll feel quite familiar. Now, what I did here, obviously with the bars, bars do, you know, the bars, round bars, obviously you're gonna feel um, a lot different from, you know, this, this, this flat vision, um, you know, bar, but um, they're both very comfortable. But uh, you do have to get some, you have to do, you definitely have to get used to it. The hoods obviously feel better on the 105. These are very small. They're not very comfortable in comparison, but these are just minor inconveniences, guys. Um, overall, if you really wanted to, you don't have to put, even on your Halo bike, you can keep a round bar or you could put a flat bar on the, on the CAD 13 if you wanted, you could put the same bars and then, but when you're virtually riding the same bike, only frame materials would be different. So that's it guys. I'll be doing some updates in the future and um, you know, maybe I'll add some data, you know, regarding some Strava segments between the two bikes so you can see the performance differences. Um, I'll eventually have to get power meters. I'll probably get some power meter pedals so that I can just swap them from bike to bike when I do the runs and, you know, get you guys a little more scientific review of both of these bikes. But this is a just, this is just a very general overview of, um, you know, the two bikes, which essentially mirror each other. And, um, you know, that, that's pretty much it. So Cat 13, Good bike? Yes. Fast bike? Absolutely. Uh, race bike? Certainly. All day comfort? Yes, for sure. Um, lightweight? Not so much, but um, if you're willing to put a few dollars into it, you can certainly get the weight down to something that's uh, very respectable. So I hope this helps you. If you have any questions on the CAD 13, uh, versus the Evo, um, feel free to shoot me a message. If there's something you would like to see or something I just simply forgot to go over in this vid, uh, feel free to comment below. Other than that, hope you enjoyed it, guys. And uh, thanks for watching.